All right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox, and today I'll be going over part one of a two-part series where we make this dynamic, stylized little bonfire you see here. All these flames are built on splines, so they're kind of infinitely changeable, um, and it works really well on top of this model from our adventure pack. And then next week, we'll be rendering it in Octane. So if you're interested, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing, I am in R25, so things might look a little different if any of you are on older versions. I recently switched, so I'm still finding my way around this new UI. But the first thing we want to do is I'm going to go to our asset browser. I'm going to go over to my Happy Toolbox model packs. I have the outdoor adventure pack in here. I'm going to go in there, pump these up, and grab this fire. So this is one of my favorite models. It's kind of hidden by this spit roaster on top of it. But I'm just going to bring that in. You can get this on the happytoolbox.com. And there we go. So I'm going to go into our fire and just delete the spit roaster on top of it. So this is the thing we're basing these flames off of, which I always really liked how this was modeled. Um, but obviously, it'd be way cooler if these were stylized and moving like we saw previously. And then the other thing we're going to do inside of our asset browser while we have it open is up in search, I'm going to type in spline primitive. And down here, there's something called the spline primitive. Now, if any of you know how to just get a straight spline without using this, please let me know. Um, because it seems like, you know, it should be over here in your spline tools. There's empty spline, but you know, there's not just a straight spline. So it feels like that should be in there. But for now, I'm just going to pull this in, drag it in. And now I have my spline primitive. I'm just going to go up to window again, click asset browser. Okay, here we go. So we have our fire pit. We took away this spit, and then in the spline primitive, I'm going to change that from a rectangle to a segment. And that's what's going to give us our straight line. And then you have a bunch of tools here to add point counts, etc. So let's make this maybe about 400. Let's do 400. Uh, and then the offset, because you can see if I hide the bonfire, it's kind of dead center in the middle, and we want the base of this axis to be at the bottom of it. So offset, do negative 50. And then for our point count, let's just put it up to about 30 right now, because we want enough points for this thing to move. Um, plane, you, you, know, you can kind of move it like this, but there's no rotating it upright, so we just have to go to rotate. Rotate this thing upright 90 degrees, and there we have our straight spline segment. And then from there, we want that kind of nice wavy motion that's happening. Um, and the way we're going to do that is you can do it a few different ways. You might use a shader, deformer, et cetera. But what I found was really nice and kind of worked well with the stylized look of this, where all the flames are kind of working together, is the formula deformer. So if I go into this little area, I go down and grab formula. and then drag that into spline primitive, hit play, we'll see it does this nice upward pulsing motion. So instead of Y radial, let's change it to Z radial. And there we go, we start getting this kind of wiggly worm looking motion going on. Um, and there's a few things inside of this formula that you can change to change this. Uh, one is obviously the bounds of this object, so we'll do that eventually. But also in this sine equation, you can change where it says 2.0, change that to like 1, much slower and kind of longer. And then also in the, where it says 0.2, if I change that to like 0.1, it has even less of an extreme kind of frequency going on. So let's leave it at 0.2, leave it at 1 right now. And then for the object bounds, we just want it to be a little bit taller, so maybe like 800. And then I'm going to move this up here. And one thing you'll notice with this is a, a pinch happens randomly. I'm not completely sure why, um, but a pinch kind of happens in here halfway through. So you can kind of see there's this little pinch going on. So we just want to push this high enough that that pinch doesn't happen. 
but we get this nice wavy motion going on here. I think I'm going to up the frequency of this a little bit. 1.4. It's feeling all right. Okay, so now we have this item. And before we get too far, we want to scale this down to kind of be roughly the size of this flame and then kind of position it at the base of this first flame. So use these flames as guides. You, can, you obviously don't need this model to do this, um, but it's pretty handy. So I'm gonna use this flame as a guide. We'll do it about there. And then I'm gonna turn that center flame off, which is flame two. Okay, and then on this spline primitive, we're just going to sweep it like you normally would. So I'm going to go over here and grab a sweep nerb. Stack that there, and then I'm going to get another spline, a circle, and put that inside the sweep nerb and scale it down to roughly the size I'm looking for. So now we have this dancing noodle in the center of a fire pit that looks pretty funny. And what we need to do to get that tapered look is on the sweep is go over to object. We wanna stay in object, go down to details, and there's kind of this scale curve going on here. And if we bring the first line down to zero, we get that extreme taper at the top going on. Um, and then if we go over to caps, we obviously don't want the flat bottom happening here. So we are going to want to change the caps. Um, currently the size is at zero. So we just want to take this all the way at top to 100. And then you'll kind of see this harsh line going on there. Some of this will go away when we render it eventually. Um, but the way you change that is adding some more segments. Um, if we turn on garage shading lines, you can kind of see all the lines that are going on here. So if I make the segments go up and down, rounds it out a little bit more. I'm just gonna put it up to like five right now. And then instead of worrying about, you know, adding too much geometry to this, I'm going to use a subdivision surface to smooth it out all in the end. So actually on our circle, I'm gonna take the number kind of, of edges down here be about one and that way you know we can work kind of low res like I like to do make a null object and then a subdivision surface stack that under there and then we can stack our sweeps in here and there you go you can't really see that bottom line so we got this nice little flame dancing here uh, currently it's too tall um, and we also the bottom is really moving around a ton and we really want that flame to kind of stay static and hooked to the fire for the most part. Um, so we'll go back into our spline primitive and go to our formula. And in our formula, we'll go over to the fields tab. And we just want a linear field, which will kind of stop some of this formula deformation from happening. So if we go to linear field and add that, change it to a Y plus, you can basically see as I pull this through, it's stopping the motion. So if the linear field is all the way at the top, there's completely no motion. If I drag it down, we have a ton of motion going on. So I just wanna pull this up a little bit and maybe scale it down a little. So it kind of stops the base from moving too much. Just using it to control this a little bit. So there we go. Now we kind of have this like rocking going on at the bottom, but the top is still free to move but we don't have it kind of jumping around all the place like we did prior. So that's feeling pretty good. I'm going to hide the linear field and then hide the formula just so we can see what's going on here a little bit better and then turn back on my fire pit model. So obviously this is too tall for this fire pit. Um, so we wanna go back to our spline primitive and that length we had, that's where we wanna kind of take it down. Maybe even further, maybe like that. Let's say seven, let's do 75. 
there we go. And then I'm going to move this spline primitive up as well. So it's hovering kind of right above the logs. I'm going to turn these other flames off for now as well. There we go. So now we have this nice little top movement. And again, you can always go back to this formula and adjust this equation to your heart's content. You know, maybe we want this dancing a little bit more. It's feeling pretty good. But with a formula, it's a very much back and forth movement, especially because it's a sine wave here. So it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so to add a little bit extra movement here on the spline primitive, I'm gonna right click, go to animation tags, and add a vibrate tag. And what I want to have happen is I want the rotation of this object to kind of move around randomly. So I'm gonna enable the rotation. You can see if I turn this up to like 180, it's just like whipping around, going all over the place. <laughs> what I want is to kind of have random rotation happening while this whole thing is spinning completely on itself in Z. So I want that to be around, you know, 180, but these to mainly be like 20. So that way it's just kind of rocking it a little bit from that base point. But if you see, I turn on the shading lines, it's actually rotating around quite a bit. So that way this point's kind of flickering over here, it's flickering over there, there's a lot of back and forth going on. And then for frequency, we don't want this flipping around too much. That feels much more like an actual flame. And then you can also mess with the scale or the position on this vibrate tag. So, you know, scale's kind of fun because you can get this like extreme flame hopping up and down, which sometimes happens with fire. I don't really love how this is going. Let's not do that. Instead, I'm gonna do a position. So I'm gonna drop this down, do a little position bob instead. So let's do like 10, drop this down again to 0.4. So it's only every once in a while. Eh, maybe we'll do like one. It's feeling pretty good. Okay. So there we go. We have our main spline. I might need to do a little bit of work to make sure this smooths out nicely at the bottom. Maybe I need to add fewer points. Let's do like 15. And then on the sweep. That's feeling pretty good. It's a little more rounded. You can see that line, but once we add like a glow to this in the render, it's not really gonna matter a whole ton. So there we go. We already have this beautiful flame dancing on top of this model. Uh, and then all we're gonna do from there is we are going to duplicate this and then uh, do a few different things to make sure they're different looking flames. So I'm gonna turn back on my flames for reference. I'm gonna duplicate by control dragging. Let's sweep. I'm going to use the spline as the main thing I'm moving. I'm going to pause because these things are wiggling out of control while I'm trying to deal with them. <laughs> and move this up, roughly get it in the same spot. And then I'm going to scale this down a little bit, just kind of eyeball it. And then instead of scaling this down like this, which tends to flatten the shape and keep the, the belly of it, I'm going to go in my circle, kind of take that circle spline down a notch, and then in my spline primitive, I'm going to change the length to like 60, maybe 55. It's feeling pretty good. Maybe move this over a little bit more. But you get the idea. It's pretty, pretty easy to do once you have this setup going on. And what's really nice, again, this is all dynamic and live, so you can always change it. It's not stamped down geometry. Um, and then on the vibrate tag, just so we have something different, let's change the seed, you know, up a couple notches. So that way it's a little bit different. Um, if I turn this model off again, you'll kind of see what's going on here. So for the most part, different movement is happening mainly because of that vibrate tag. If we took the vibrate tag off, you would kind of see the same exact formula and movement going 
which partially is nice as we're seeing it here because you know it kind of looks like the same wind pattern is blowing through these things. Um, so I'm gonna leave this one how it is. Just change the seed of the vibrate tag. I'm gonna turn on another object, duplicate this. Pull it over like I did the last one. Put it into place. It's looking pretty good. Maybe scale the circle up a tiny bit so it's a little bit different. May make the spline primitive 60. And then on the formula, what I'm going to do is instead of Z radial, because otherwise these will look pretty dang close, I'm going to change it to X radial. The, the sine wave is going the opposite way of what it was. And then again on the vibrate tag, I'm just gonna change this up to you know an eight or something. So now we have a little bit different movement going on. And then we have two more. So let's duplicate that one we just duplicated. Go to our spline, pull it over, pause again so they don't jiggle away from us. You can kind of rotate these to be the same position. It doesn't really matter because they're gonna kind of do whatever they want anyway. Change the vibrate tag up a few notches. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the, you know, actual numbers down here. So let's change this to 10 and 10. Maybe we'll change this one to five. And then the formula, maybe I'll change this to a three. Just to add a little bit of variance going on here since we don't have a seed inside of this formula. Okay, and then we'll do our last one. Spline down. Down to five, eight, change the seed. Just trying to get some random values and numbers in here going on. And then turn that final flame off and feel free to delete these as well once you have the placement down. Okay. If I go back and hit play, we have some nice movement going on these little stylized flames. And that is pretty much it. Again, what's really great about the system is since it's all under the sweep nerve, you know, you can dynamically change it. You can change that scale of the taper. Um, you can also add a bunch of other effectors in here if you want. And then the linear field's really nice because it kind of keeps the base uh, static and not going crazy so yeah that's pretty much it hopefully uh this bonfire gets you in the mood for some s'mores and next week we'll be taking this into octane and rendering the coals and the flames so there's like a nice jelly glow look going on here to keep moving forward with that stylized nature if you like this video give it a thumbs up always appreciate comments in the comment section below let me know if there's some easier ways that i can do this um, and as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. We have a ton of model packs going on, including the Outdoor Adventure Pack, which is where you will find this bonfire right here. All right, I'll see you next time.